In this tutorial, we're going to create an apple slicer using SolidWorks X-Shape, a cloud-based subdivision tool for freeform 3D modeling. The following topics will be included in this workflow. You can find what you need to get started and design along with us using the link in the description below. Opening up the Apple Slicer start file, we have three ordered geometrical sets, known as OGSs. The first contains reference images of our Apple Slicer, including a side and top view. The second OGS contains the Apple Slicer blade, which has already been designed for us. And the last OGS, named Handle, is empty because we have yet to design it. We'll start off creating the Apple Slicer by hiding the Blade OGS and activating the Handle OGS. Click the Blade OGS once to access the Hide command from the Context toolbar. Then double-click the Handle OGS to activate it. With the correct OGS highlighted, we can add in a subdivision shape from the Subdivision tab on the bottom action bar. For this model, we'll begin with a torus. Place the subdivision shape at the origin over the X. Next, we'll edit how many vertices, edges, and faces the shape begins with by changing the number of segments. Decrease the number of minor segments to 6 and increase the number of major segments to 16. Hit Enter and press the green check mark. Now we want to edit the size of our torus. Select Show Bounding Box from the top toolbar and click one of the dimensions to access the dialog box through the context toolbar. In the dialog box, turn on the option to Scale Non-Uniform. Enter 130 mm in the X and Y directions and 30 mm in the Z direction. Hit the green check mark and turn off Bounding Box from the top toolbar. We'll start by editing the top view, so let's hide the side image reference for now. Click the side image from the Design Manager and select Hide from the Context Toolbar. Next, we want to make the inside wall flatter by deleting the innermost edge loop. Double-clicking one of these inner edges will automatically select the entire edge loop. To delete it, press Delete on your keyboard or the Delete command from the Action Bar. To flatten the inner wall, we want to crease the edges of the inner face loop. Similar to selecting an edge loop, we can select a face loop by double-clicking one of its faces. Double-click the face towards the edge in the direction you want the face loop to go in. Clicking towards the top will select a vertical face loop, but in this case, we want to click towards the side edge to select a horizontal face loop. With the face loop selected, Open the Crease Edge command from the Action Bar and turn on Smooth Crease to make it a soft transition. Double-click again to access the inner face loop. Then select the top plane of the triad in the top right to view the model directly from the top. With the face loop selected, we have access to the Robot Manipulator. We can use the robot to translate, rotate, or scale our selection. To scale in one direction, we can click and drag the scale point at the end of the arrow. In this case, we want to scale in both the X and Y directions. Let's undo the initial scale from the action bar, and this time, click and release one scale point, then click and drag the other to scale in both directions simultaneously. We'll scale to match the image reference as closely as possible. Let's turn on Symmetry from the Action Bar so we can model both ends of the hand grip at once. We can select the YZ plane either from the Graphics area or the Design Manager. The green edge loop signifies the plane of symmetry. To begin creating the hand grip, select the face near where the grip meets the torus in the reference image and click Extrude from the Context toolbar. Notice this extrusion is automatically mirrored. Select the extruded face to access the robot manipulator. The robot is currently oriented according to the face we selected, 
but we can right-click at the center of the robot to reorient it to XYZ. Click and drag the arc of the robot inwards to rotate the face 60 degrees. You can hover over the ruler that appears to snap to increments of 5 degrees. With both extruded faces angled towards one another, hold the control key while selecting both faces and click Extrude from the context toolbar to bridge them together. Next, we'll extend the handle away from the torus. We can double-click one of the center faces closer to the edge in the Y direction to select the entire edge loop. Using the robot, drag this face loop away from the torus 20 millimeters. Similar to editing angles, we can hover over the ruler to snap to increments of precise values. With this face loop still selected, scale in the Y direction first, then the X direction to match the image reference. Now that the top view is complete, we can use the shift and arrow keys to rotate 90 degrees to the side view. To start sculpting the side view, show the side image reference from the design manager. With the preview shown, box select the hand grip of the apple slicer by clicking and dragging. Note that four vertices should be highlighted. Use the robot manipulator to translate upwards by 15 millimeters. Next, we want to change our axis of symmetry to mirror the entire hand grip to the other side of the apple slicer. Click Symmetry from the action bar to deactivate it. Click the Symmetry command again to reactivate, but this time, mirror about the ZX plane. Make sure you're mirroring the correct side of the apple slicer and the hand grip appears on both sides. We can toggle the direction of symmetry in the dialog box. Next, to make this product sit flat on a countertop, let's add a smooth crease to the bottom. Double-click one of the bottom faces towards the adjacent horizontal face to select the entire bottom face loop. Select Crease Edges from the action bar and make sure Smooth Crease is turned on. The sculpting process is now complete and we can exit the subdivision environment by clicking the green check in the top toolbar. Notice that the subdivision surface is automatically knitted into a closed, watertight body. Subdivision surfaces can be knitted after the fact by accessing the command from the context toolbar. Finally, we want to combine this shape with the blade that has already been designed. Start by hiding the reference image OGS from the design manager as well as the XYZ planes. To quickly select the planes, select the first plane, then hold the shift key when selecting the third to select anything in between. Click hide from the context toolbar. Notice there are no notches in the center of the subdivision model for the blade to fit into. To fix this, we'll perform a Combine Subtract. Start by showing the Blade OGS, then selecting Combine from the action bar under the Features tab. In this case, we want to subtract the Blade geometry from the Handle geometry. Inside the dialog box, choose Subtract. From the Graphics area, select the Handle as the target body and the Blade as the tool body, and continue. Now when the Blade OGS is hidden, notches can be seen for the blade to fit into. Our Apple Slicer model is now complete. Feel free to continue modeling and make this design your own. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, check out the SolidWorks YouTube channel.